in the spirit and in the truth of God's love. Amen. See, love is a principal thing. And God is saying here that without this love, that I am nothing. See, I may go away from what? I may even give my body as an offering. And I may give everything that I have, amen, to be burned. But I gain nothing if I do not have this love. And so God is working on our love here today. Hello, YouTube family, amen. God bless you. We love you. We're here out of the 1 Corinthians there in chapter 13, amen. As y'all connect with me here today. See, love is patient because he's going to now expand to us and share with us what this love of God is. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealousy, amen, and it does not brag. It is not even proud, can I hear an amen, that, that love is not rude and it is not selfish and it does not get upset with our others amen because love does not count up the wrongs that have been done amen so not only that love is patient and kind but love is not jealousy love does not brag and love is not proud amen love is not rude it is not selfish and it doesn't get upset with others amen because if anyone has gotten upset or angered the lord says that don't let the sun go down on your anger in other words when it comes nighttime we want to make peace and we want to have this love of God and saying, Lord, that if I've sinned or if I said or I've done anything, I release this and I give this to you, O Lord, because love is patient and love is kind. And I'm not going to brag about this and I'm not going to get upset about this, but love does not count up any wrongs that have been done to it. See, love is not happy with evil, but is happy with the truth. And that's what God wants us. He wants to be us to be happy in the truth of his word. Because love patiently accepts all things. Are you with me, church? It patiently accepts all things. It always trusts. It always hopes. And it always remains strong for everything. Are you with me, church? Why? Because love patiently accepts all things. It's always truthful. It is always hoping. And it's always strong. In other words, this is God. Because God is love. You know, church, as I was preparing for the message and I'm telling you God is here today he's speaking to our lives and as I was reading I'm going to read another message um, or another scripture amen and then we're going to go to back to 1 Corinthians so uh, safely hold that amen safely hold that place amen as we go and to what God is saying. There in Isaiah 40. Because I'm going to be reading out of Isaiah 40 now. Amen. And as I had taken upon the notes. About God being my wonder. Amen. It says God says. Comfort, comfort my people. Speak kindly to the people of Jerusalem. And just tell them. That their time of service is finished. That they have paid for their sins. And that the Lord has punished Jerusalem twice for every sin that they did. Amen. And so as we read, we know that there is 
of the one that's calling in the desert. There's this one. And, and I'm speaking this word because I believe you can say, you know what, Sister Tina? I haven't been loving. Uh-oh. <laughs> I haven't been graceful. I haven't been thankful. Come on now. I haven't been working the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. But God says, you know what? This time of service, in other words, those things that you were doing, those things that you were wrong, you know what? That service of your old life is finished. That everything that had to do with your sins, that God has paid for your sins. Amen. And God will take care of you every step of the way because God's word lives forever. Now I want you to go with me there in verse number 10. Amen. And it says there in chapter 40 verse 10. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Tell your neighbor thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want you to say it right there. It says, look, the Lord your God is coming with power to rule all the people. Look, he will bring reward for his people. Can I hear an amen? And he will have their payment with them. See, God takes care of his people like a shepherd. That he gathers them like the lambs in his arms. And he carries them close to him. And he gently leads the mothers of the lamb. In other words, God has this great reward for you. As he does for you. And as he does for you. And even as myself, God has this great reward of the promise now I'm telling you you may be in this process but in that process it's a promise that God as we attach ourselves into all of his promises that God is taking us through his purposes amen and through these processes that are for the promise. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Let's go back to, once again, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Amen. Hallelujah. There in verse number 8, the word says that love never fails. See, there are gifts of prophecy, but they will be ended. There are gifts of speaking in different languages but those gifts will stop and see people are talking about the gift under the Christmas tree how about the gifts that God has given unto us that we have heavenly gifts that God has promising to us but we need the love can you hear can you hear me today church tell your neighbor if you're by somebody here today you know what we got to love. We got to love. Amen. God is wanting us to love. See, with the gifts of speaking, there is a gift of knowledge. And it will come to the end. The reason is that our knowledge and our ability to prophesy are not perfect. But when the perfection comes, the things that are not perfect will end. You see, church? There always comes a beginning to an ending. And what God has begun, He will faithful to be completed in His process within our lives. God is looking for Him within us to live out perfectly. Not only the prophetic word, but as well as the word of prophecy. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. God is looking for his remnant church in the last hour and his last age for the last time. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. 
I really feel that in my spirit here today. Then when perfection comes, the things that are not perfect will end. See, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. Hey, I even reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, in other words, when I became a woman, come on now. I stopped those childish ways. Amen. My ways of thinking, if it was childish, I'm going to stop them. It is the same with us that now we see a dim reflection as if it were looking into a mirror. But then we shall see things clearly that now, 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 now I know only in part. But then I will know fully as God has known me. And so these three things continue forever these things are going to continue forever not only in my life but in each and every one of your life these are the greatest the faith the hope and the love God doesn't want us to lose our faith God doesn't want us to lose our hope and God doesn't want us to lose our love you know because in these last hours so many people are fainting church so many people are leaving the church so many people are doing so many things that it's 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 crazy it's it's a crazy world out there locos 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 but i'm telling you i would rather be un loco para cristo jesus i would rather say you know what i'm crazy for christ amen Let's put the CC on because we're crazy for Christ. Hallelujah. And not into the things of this world. Because as the dark age comes and the world gets more darker, the light is going to shine more the brighter. Are you with me, church? God is looking for the remnant. Tell your neighbor that God is looking for the remnant. And the greatest of these is love. Can I hear an amen? The greatest of these is love. Let's go to the next scriptural reference that I have here for you today. It's out of the book of Jeremiah. There in chapter 29, we know it very well. Amen. Because God, we serve a God of miracles. We serve a God that has plans for your life. And I believe that every day of our life, because our tomorrows are not promised, we can't be saying that, oh, tomorrow or the next day. See, those things are not promised, amen? But God is saying that we need to count it as all joy for these blessings. See, this is what the Lord, the, the all-powerful, the God of Israel, who He is saying, to all people. Amen. This is what he is saying. This is what the Lord says. Babylon will be powerful for 70 years. And after that time that I will come to you. And I will keep my promise. To bring you back to Jerusalem. See I say this because I know. I know what I am planning for you says the Lord. I know. That I have these good plans for you, says the Lord. Amen. These plans that I have for you, they're not to hurt you. They're not to harm you. They're not to bring destruction upon your life. Amen. That's the devil that comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Are you with me, church? But I will give you the hope. I will give you the future. Come on now. And then you... You see, there's something that we have to do in these good plans because when, when we speak about the plans, we speak about the promises of God that it's not only good plans. You've heard me say before that when I talk about good, I talk about God because God is good, amen. And the promises of God are good. And the promises of God are sure. Are you with me, church? So it's not only 
being good, but he has a God future for you. And he's saying in order for that to happen, come on with me, church. He says, then you will call my name. And so one of the things is that we have to call on God. We have to come close to God. We have to come and pray to God. Are you with me, church? And I'm saying this because the word of God says, then you will call me and I will listen to you. When you call my name, you will, you will come to me, pray to me, and I will listen to you. This is the almighty God saying, I will listen to you when you call, when you come, and when you pray. Are you listening to me, church? So we have to call on God. We have to come to God. And we have to pray to God. And God says, then he will listen to you. See, God says, you will search me when we search the Lord. And when you search for me with all your heart, not just a little bit, it says, you will find me. Because I will let you know. I will let you find me. You know, it may feel like this is a hide and seek. Amen. That as we seek out the Lord. And it's just not seeing. But it's literally seeking the scriptures of the word of God. The promises of this God future that he has for your life. He says you will find me. As we seek the Lord. And I want to share with you the promises that he has for you. That you will find me says the Lord. And I will bring you back from your captivity. I forced you to leave this place. But I will gather you from all the nations. Amen. From the north, I will gather you from the south. I will gather you from the east. I will gather you from the west. Amen. But it says, but I will gather you from the nations, says the Lord. And I will bring you back to this place. Amen. Hallelujah. That God has given to each and every one of us. See, church, God has plans for you. And God has promises for you. And God will prosper you here today. Amen. I know. I know, church. I know. I got words of scripture for you today. Go with me there out of the book of Proverbs there in chapter 4. We'll be reading 18. Amen. And uh, we'll let the Lord lead. Let the Lord lead. Let's go there to verse 18, there in Proverbs chapter 4. Amen. See, the way of a good person is like the light of dawn, growing brighter and brighter until the full daylight. I love that, church, because God is wanting us to grow. God is wanting us to mature. God is wanting to lead us. God is wanting to grow us. God is wanting to increase us. Can I hear an amen? But God is wanting us to get this wisdom. God is wanting us to get this understanding. God is wanting us to obtain this knowledge for our lives. Can I hear an amen? See there in verse number 20, it says, My child... Pay attention to my words. Listen closely to what I say. Don't ever forget my words. Keep them always in mind. They are the key to life. For those who find them, they bring health to the whole body. So be careful what you think because your thoughts run your life. I love that. 
because it ministered to me so much. Because we have to be careful, church, where our thoughts are being gathered. Because our thoughts will lead us in ways, amen, that we are choosing, not even, not wanting to go willingly, but because our thoughts not right. And so our thoughts have to be right according to God's word. See, don't use your mouth to tell the lies. Don't ever say things that are not true. Keep your eyes focused. See, there's that focus of going into 2020. God is saying that I need your eyes to be focused on what is right. Are you with me, church? And look straight ahead to what is good. God is saying, be careful what you do and always do what is right. Because God is wanting for you to do what is right. Keep your focus in this year of 2020. And I believe that God is bringing in that focus, bringing in that focus. It's like a, a magnifier. It's like a, 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 the telescope that as you refine, you know, the blur into the focusing of what God is wanting you to aim at, what God is wanting for you to do. See, be careful what you do and always do what is right. Don't turn to the road, amen, of goodness. Keep away from evil path. See, don't turn off. Don't turn off the road of goodness. Amen. But once again, you know, God's not coming to a church that is just good. God is coming to pick up his remnant to a God church. A church is without blemish and without wrinkles. Come on now. A church that is purified, a church that is cleansed, a church that is holy, a church that seeks after God's own heart, a church that is prophesying and prophetically the right way. Are you with me, church? And the will of God. Hallelujah. See, God is speaking for us to take that narrow path. And, and all these scriptures, word of references are coming to mind about, you know what, why it is a path that will lead to destruction. But there is that narrow path, that straight way, amen, that will only lead to life. Can I hear an amen? Praise God. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Can I hear an amen, church? Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Now go ahead and turn with me to the book of uh, John chapter 14. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name. Okay, there in chapter 14, there in verse number 6. Hallelujah. Verse 6, I know that's a famous scripture. But I want you to know that Jesus answered when they were wanting to know the only way. This is the only way, church. There's no other way but the way that God has spoken. And Jesus had answered that I am that way and the truth and the life. Amen. The only way to the Father is through me. See, if you really knew me, you would know my Father too. But now, now, you do know him, and you have seen him. And Philip then said to him, Lord, show us the Father. That is all we need. And Jesus answered, I have been with you long enough now. Do you still not know me, Philip? He says, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. And so why do you say to show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? 
See, the words that I say to you do not come from me, but the Father who lives in me does his own work. So believe me when I say that I am the Father and the Father is in me. I'm telling you that is so powerful, church. Or believe because of the miracles that I have done. And I even tell you the truth. You the truth. And I'm going to tell you even the very truth of this gospel. God is saying, even here today, church, amen, that I am telling you this very truth. That whoever believes in me will do the same things that I do. See, those who believe will do even these greater things, these things, because I am going to the Father. And if you ask for anything in my name, I will do it for you so that the Father's glory, amen, the Father's glory, the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. That if you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it for you. See, God is here to break the chains of those who are captive. God is setting the people free here today. God is setting a path of righteousness of what he is choosing to want to do even for your life, church. So I'm going to go ahead and go on live and praise and worship, but I'm going to salute and bless all of my family members of those who are my YouTube family. God bless you. We love you. Tune in for more. Get the rest of this. Amen. As this word travels the world. Amen. 24-7. And you can be a part of it as you share this God-given word. God has a destiny and a place for you. Amen. Even here at the gathering, celebrating, amen, the works of the Lord Jesus Christ, His path through this word of God. Till next time, church. God bless you.